criticize every part of my writing. Okay, I've got a cube root of x to the ninth and y to the third. Knowing what you guys now know about how these work, what can that be simplified to? X, 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 three, and y. And you could put the one there if you want, or you can leave it invisible. Why is my thing keep breaking? I want to show you guys a couple of different ways to get there. Because this, I'm going back to the original, oh, I get it. is equal to They are the opposites of each other. They're equivalent, written in different forms. And as you guys know, over the last few days, we learned that when you have something raised to a, a power that's a fraction, you can take the denominator and make it the index. You can take the base of it and put that in as the radicand. So these are opposite facts. But they both end up simplifying down to x to the third, y to the first. There's another way to do it from here without going to this. And I just want to show it to you really quickly. If I take x to the ninth, shh, ladies, and raise it to the one third, times y to the third, and raise to the one third, I want you to think about what would happen when I multiply, because this is the power to a power rule, right? This one third would get multiplied by nine. What would nine times one over three be? Because nine times one would be nine divided by three, we'd get back to that three. And y to the third times one third, three times one would be three over three, one. You guys know a lot about how these work now, and so without having to go through all of that, you were able to tell me the simplified version right away. You don't even gotta write the one on top of the one, right? This one is gonna look really confusing if you don't. No. But stick with me, because it's not as confusing as it looks. I would like you to write parentheses, x squared, y to the 1 half, raised to the fourth power, times the radical with an index of 3, y to the third. I know it looks like a whole other language, but you guys do not look as confused as people did on Tuesday when I tried to show some of this to begin with. We're going to just take it piece by piece. This is going to get multiplied by this. So x 2 times 4, y 1 half times 4, and then what's going to happen with this radical? It's just y. It's just y. So now I'm going to simplify this. What's x 2 times 4? x to the 8. What's y 1 half times 4? y 2. And then there's another y here, so we're going to rewrite this as x to the 8, y to the 3rd. Wait, why is there another y? Because we took it from here oh, to yeah. here uh, to here. This sure. x and y came from the parentheses. This y came from the radical. Mm -hmm. Wait, if there's two y's, wouldn't you add them together? This is y to the second power, this is y to the first power. Oh. So together they're y to the third. Because oh. remember when we're multiplying them, at, without the parentheses we add them. Okay, I'm going to take this little space in my notebook up here. And I want you guys to write this. Index of 4, x to the fourth, y to the twelfth. That is really messy. I'm going to rewrite it. I'm writing on the back of something glued, and this pen is just like oh, bouncing off of it. I so I'm sorry for I my know. messy writing. Mine's just poking holes. There we go. That's neater. 
Can you tell me what that equals? X, X. Y, three. Y, three. Y, three. Yeah. Okay, I know all of that. Let's write out the X times X times X times X and circle them and all of that we did for a couple days. It was tedious, but you guys can see them now, right? I can see them. Yeah, boy. Okay, last problem, and then I'm going to give you guys some practice problems. Oh, wow. This one is set up as a ratio. I still like that turtle. Yeah. <laughs> X, Y to the one half squared over the radical with a five index x to the fifth. Is this going to be in our like final? It might be. <gasps> wow. We finally did something easier. This is easier. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, easier than like what we. I will be honest with you guys. Every year when I get to this part of the chapter in the book, I'm like, ugh. Right. These just look so confusing. But let's just take it apart and do what we know how to do. We're going to take this x squared, or xy to the 1 half raised to the 2. This is going to get multiplied by the invisible 1 here. So the x is going to be x squared. What's going to happen with the y? It's going to become just y. Yeah, just y, unless you want to put the 1 there. And then what happens down here with this x? It becomes x. x. Okay, and do we leave it down there? Cancel. We're going to take this x, which is to the 1, and we're going to subtract it from this x up here, right? So this is xy. It's just going to be xy. Okay. So just do them. I mean, when you first look at it, you're like, oh my gosh, that's lots of pieces and parts. Do what you know how to do. And you're practicing on eight problems today. We're back on page 491. And I want you doing 23 to 30. And I'm leaving my book open up here so you guys can come check the work as you go if you'd like. When you finish this, on the center table is a new tab for your notebook. Because next week, on Monday, we're starting polynomials. Yes! I know, it's one of my favorites, too. And I don't know if we're going to get back to <laughs> radicals. I don't know if we're going to get back to radicals later. But when you get, before you glue it in, like here's our radical stuff. Let me zoom out. I want you to skip three pages in your notebook and put this on the fourth. Oh, wow. Okay, so like after this one, we skip three pages. Right? Yeah, because I'm not, I think we might have time to come back to radicals, but it might be in June, and I want you to have it in your notebook in the and same place as the others. Oh, the same. And then you're going to glue this. And then scavenger hunt. So wow. eight problems, glue in the new tab, scavenger hunt. With the scavenger hunt, you might want access to this mini book. Wow. Okay?